If you know what day it is, you know the drill. Today we are going over one year later. We're talking about prospects taken in the 2022 NHL entry draft, going over their stories from last year, how that translated into this year, what these prospects have accomplished, and where they're looking to go from here. We've talked about a bunch of the top picks. There still are a few of them that are missing, not gonna lie. But this name is one of the ones that we needed to check off some of the guys at the very top of the draft. We're heading over to the fifth overall spot and talking about a guy that we had made a video about almost two months ago, I feel like. It was around two months ago-ish. Today we are talking about a player who did not decide to head over to Philadelphia Flyers development camp. That was seen as a pretty intriguing move, but we made the video two months ago talking about why. Let's talk even further, though, about Cutter Gauthier, the Philadelphia Flyers' fifth overall pick in the 2022 draft. Now, I'm assuming that most of y'all who are watching these videos are capable of reading, so you probably read the title. You already saw what we had said about him when it comes to his pre-draft status. He was not necessarily a guy that people thought would be going in this spot. Fifth overall was a little bit high for Cutter Goche compared to where he was ranked to go in 2022, which was 11th by Elite Prospects, 6th by Future Considerations, Craig Button had him at 7, McKean's at 13, only Bob McKenzie had him at number 5. All the other outlets had him a bit lower than that. Despite this, the Philadelphia Flyers liked him enough to take him in the fifth overall spot, as a 19-year-old 6'2", 194 left-handed left-wing center. I mean, at the draft he wasn't 19, he's 19 now, but you get what I mean. Cutter Goche is a pretty solidly sized dude. 6'2", 194 is definitely somebody you don't want to mess with. And when it comes to the way he plays the game, with the NTDP last season, he had 65 points and 54 games played total. 34 goals as well. Not to mention the point-per-game stint he had had at the World Under-18s, wherein he had 9 points in 6 games. Cutter Gauthier showed off in his 21-22 season his ability to take over shifts. The scouting report on Elite Prospects reads that he is so good defensively, using his body well along the boards and in corners to win puck battles and move up ice. Offensively, he is incredibly efficient. The puck is on his stick and off his stick in transition, but he also recognizes when he has pockets of space to initiate offense himself. Cutter Goche is unafraid to drive the puck to the net and protects the puck nicely when he chooses to do so. When it comes to the quote-unquote pure power forward type of mold, Cutter Goche is arguably one of the best prospects we have seen in the past few years who exhibits that type of formula. Big, strong, can power to the net, and he's really good defensively and on the boards as well. Not to mention how he had a bunch of penalty minutes, he's a pretty physical guy as well, he definitely isn't somebody to take lightly on the ice. Heading into the 22-23 season though, the big question was how is Cutter Goche's ability to score and dominate against kids going to translate to the NCAA? And lo and behold, it actually did translate pretty well. Cutter Goche, in the 32-game sample as a freshman with BC, had 16 goals and 21 assists for 37 total points. He had 37 penalty minutes as well, so he was about a penalty minute a game. And he was over a point per game for Team USA at the World Juniors, too. 10 points, 7 games, 4 goals. Not to mention the fact that at the end of the season, Cutter Goche suited up for Team USA at the World Championships, too, and was a point per game in that tournament with 7 goals in 10 games. Just the pure hard stats of what Cutter Goche was able to do paint a very diversified goal scorer that was able to take his offensive prowess from the NTGP and apply it to NCAA competition and World Championship competition, too. That's really difficult to be able to say out of a just recently drafted 18-year-old guy, but Cutter Goche was able to do it. And because he has showed off so well, he has been frequently labeled as one of the Flyers' top prospects, a goal scorer, power forward type guy, which is why it was a pretty big deal earlier this year, two months ago, when he decided not to join development camp. Now, we made our video talking about why it was. It wasn't a big deal. He just was a part of an NCAA system that didn't really allow for players to go to camp without having to pay their own travel expenses. It was weird. You can watch the previous video to get the scoop on that. But long story short, it wasn't his fault. Heading into this upcoming season, though, we had ourselves even more of an update as to what Cutter Goche's plan seems to be. Take a look at this article from Stephen Ellis on Daily Faceoff from August 17th, so about 
two weeks ago-ish. Philadelphia Flyers' Cutter Goche is ready to chase a national title and World Junior Gold. Based off of just the title, you can see what it is that he's aiming for in this upcoming season. He's not planning to play with the Flyers for 23-24. He's planning to go back to Boston. He's planning to win a national championship. He's planning to win World Junior Gold, too. Take a look at the comments that Goche made regarding playing at the international stage last year. It was surreal. When you get the opportunity to play and learn from NHL players who have been in the league for many years, the league you're striving to be in, it's cool to take away things from their game. Goche also said that he and the Flyers discussed the possibility of Goche to turn pro midway through 22-23. With the Flyers in a rebuild, Goche had a chance to play an integral role early, but in the end, it made more sense for the forward to return to school. It was in the back of my mind during the second half of the past year, but I committed to go back to BC, and I'm a man of my word. We've got a pretty solid group coming in, so I'm ready for it. The article reads this, that Goche skipped Flyers development camp early this summer, and with Goche citing his busy season as a reason, there wasn't much for him to prove as the Flyers' best North American prospect. He did need a break, though, after playing deep into May. But 24-25, that is when things get interesting. There's no question he'll be a full-time NHLer by then. The Flyers will enter the coming season as one of the worst teams in the league. They're destined for another high-end pick, perhaps a D-man to join a forward-heavy pipeline. With a solid prospect crop, they're a few years away from making a real splash, and by then, Goche should be at full speed with a few solid campaigns under his belt. This year, though, 23-24, it's all about winning. World Junior Gold. National title. Then we'll likely see Cutter Goche skate in a few games to close out the year for the Flyers, giving the fanbase a taste of the future after what will likely be another difficult season. A taste of hope they desperately need. Now, Stephen Ellis does a really good job at writing a bunch of other stuff regarding the situation, talking about Goche and his season after getting drafted in the fifth overall spot. Link is in the description if you want to read more about this entire thing yourself. But for Cutter Goche, this really does seem to be the plan here. The way Stephen Ellis laid it out seems more appropriate than not, where this upcoming year it's going to be focused on Cutter Goche getting him back up into NCAA speed, hopefully dominating that league, being over a point per game as he was last year, getting the World Junior invite, because last year he was already pretty good. 10.7 games played as an 18-year-old? That's definitely not bad. With an extra year of experience, he's got himself a chance to really take it to the World Juniors this season, and with a USA squad that's going to boast the likes of some other really talented players, you've got other younger Americans like Adam Fantilli that might be loaned out, who knows? You, of course, have the Logan Cooleys of the world. If he gets loaned out, that's going to be a pretty good bet as well. Some of these guys are graduating, unfortunately. You're not going to be able to see Luke Hughes suit up anymore, but... The names on USA Hockey are always pretty deep, especially nowadays, considering how good their development has been. So for Cutter Goche, this could be a really good chance for him to be the top dog on an American World Junior team, wherein he will be one of the older guys. He's going to be 20 by the time the World Junior tournament comes to an end, so it doesn't mean he'll be eligible for next year's tournament. But for now, this looks like it could be the stage. If this starts out, what is going to be a 23-24 of prosperity for Goche? That looks like a pretty good deal for a lot of Philadelphia Flyers fans looking for your prospects to make bigger splashes in their respective leagues. World Junior Gold, National Championship Gold, the Boston College Eagles have themselves some really interesting names coming into next season's worth of play. Of course, Cutter Goche is there, but so is Gabe Perot, who was recently drafted. Will Smith is heading over to BC, too. If that could actually work out really well, I'd love to see Will Smith and Cutter Goche form some chemistry because it would set Goche up pretty nicely to maybe get centered by a guy like Morgan Frost long term. Who really knows? So if you're a Philadelphia Flyers fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Cutter Goche went from somewhat of a reach in the top five, somewhat of a surprising pick to a guy that had such an amazing year that he is looking like an absolute force out there for Team USA and for the Eagles in the NCAA. Thoughts on how he's developed so far from last year to now? Where do you see Cutter Goche going into the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.